I want to continue our introduction to oil painting through brushes. Uh, brushes are a great tool. You'll be using them primarily. I will say that brushes are extremely important when it comes to quality. And you'll have a number of different brushes to use. Over here, you'll see just what I call my industrial brushes. Brushes that I lay in washes with. Brushes that I lay sometimes with varnish on. Sometimes I lay and even paint with brushes when I'm painting very large passages. I never throw a brush away. Most of these are brushes that I've painted a house with before, cleaned, used, and it tends to make the bristles a little rough, which works out great for something that I'm often sometimes just putting on gesso on a canvas, or if I'm throwing down a quick layer of color, or I want big masses of color. You'll find that you can also cut these brushes in different directions if you wish to for certain effects. So rarely do I throw brushes away. Uh, some of the other brushes I prefer for many cases, and these are what we think of as the traditional hair brushes, uh, various sizes. And what you're seeing here is a hog bristle brush. Literally, the hairs that we see come from a hog, the very stiff bristles from hogs. The good thing about natural brushes, especially hog bristle brushes. When the paint is loaded on to a brush and you're dragging it, that's the term that we use when it pulls across the canvas, the natural hair brushes tend to release the pigment very gradually. They don't stay in there, but they are released gradually. They want a little bit more absorbent. And some of the synthetic brushes, which you see here as a synthetic, these are synthetics, are really plastic or polymer. And in many cases, they have great uses and they're wonderful brushes, but they tend to react a little differently. They're almost like palette knives. They just move the paint around. They let go of the pigment very quickly. They're like small little palette knives to paint with and shaped in different ways. But because of the shape is easy to shape, flats specifically, you can get very easy kind of to paint with. They clean up well, they're very versatile, they tend to be a little bit uh, less expensive, so that helps also. Also, I want to introduce, introduce you to the different shapes of a brush. When it comes to buying a brush, you're gonna need a number of different kinds. Uh, there are flats, although this one has been used so much, you can see it's starting to turn into a filbert. This is a bright, which is nothing more than a fl little longer flat brush. You have rounds, and you can see that it's round in the sense that it's round shaped this way, and it's round shaped this way. Then you have filberts. Filberts, it's a funny name, is flat when you're looking at it, its profile this way, and round when you're looking at it this way. I prefer this brush probably more than any other brush that I use. And it's just personal taste. Everyone will have their own. Because I can paint a very thin line by painting it on its side, or I can flatten it and get a much fatter line or application of color. And then sometimes, especially if I'm, uh, I like that square tiled edge from time to time, different effects, or if I'm painting buildings and I need a good hard edge, a good sharp hard edge, a flat pulls really well. But at the same time, I can make it thin and pull a thinner edge. A flat's a great brush for uses, especially if you like that thick, thin quality. Here's another filbert, now in the range of a synthetic filbert. And then we have our natural hair bristles, such as rounds. This is a very small round. You're gonna want some detail brushes. You tend to paint the very last things you paint in detail. Now you can get much, much smaller brushes and I have very small brushes too. Occasionally when I need very tiny details, I do very little painting with them. They're only the tiniest of detail at the very last of a painting when I'm completing something that I will use. Uh, these are sable brushes. Sable comes from the little red sable, mostly from uh, Russia. We had a few years where we had an embargo against Russia and it was very hard to get sable brushes again. And in that case, another good brush to use is another natural bristle brush. And this is a 
badger. You might also see mongoose from time to time. I really love the softness of these badger brushes. Now, this is a very expensive brush. It has great, if I'm painting soft skin and I wanna get those soft blends. So every brush has its own particular usage and purpose. When it comes to buying a brush, a brush does not have to be expensive to be a good brush. These particular Rosemary and Company brushes are expensive, but they last well. Uh, they paint well. Uh, these Blick Master Stroke are really good brushes. You're going to find that when you're painting with oils, the oil, the natural acidity of the oil paint and the roughness of the canvas and the texture you're painting on tend to wear natural bristles down. So you're going to have to buy a lot of brushes anyway. When it comes to detailed brushes, you want to be able to hold a brush at a point that you can see here. And even when wet, if I break this down, I put it back in mineral spirits, I dry it off, flick it, and it still holds a really nice point. When it comes to buying a brush, anytime you're in an art store and you see the brushes, the brushes ask for a little jar of water. Any art store worth its salt will let you have a little glass of water. And you want to put the brush into the water, break off the sizing, flick it across your wrist, and see if it pulls back that same shape. You want it to be able to hold that nice point. And uh, also, when you're looking at brushes, and I can show you on some of these bigger ones, you want to make sure this, the ferrule, the part that's holding the hairs or the bristles to the stick, you want to make sure that there's not a seam. If you see one of those little seams in your ferrule, that's usually a sign that it's a hobby brush. It's very cheap. Here in my old brush, you can see what I'm talking about. There's a seam there. They're stamped together. They're not very expensive. They tend to lose their hairs quite easily and things like that. And that's fine if you're painting a house or you're using it for, you know, just utilitarian purposes, nothing wrong. But for art brushes, you're probably, nothing's going to make painting easier or more difficult than your brush. Cheap brushes will make the painting process so much harder. You'll be fighting your painting most of the time. You can probably get by with a small set of brushes. I'm going to lay out the ones that you could probably use and get by with. Size-wise for yourself there. That little range of brushes right there would probably more than you will need to get started. Thank you very much. We'll start an introduction to oil painting with our next video.